Hey guys, Infidel 1258 here. We're going to do some more rank grind. But before we do, I just want to comment on the cryptocurrency bull market that continues to rage on. It's pretty awesome, isn't it? I know you guys are loving that. I'm loving it. Bitcoin, I think it touched 55 last night while, we're, while I was sleeping. And uh, that's huge. You know, that's a big deal. I don't know if it's going to keep going up or if it's going to dip down from here. Um, but I've... I've got confidence that the upward trajectory is going to continue uh, at least for a while and in that time i plan to take advantage of it because i expect my alts to do similar things and even better bigger things and so um, i'm excited to watch some of these guys here blowing off like um i don't know how many of you guys are doing the shiba shiba inu thing i'm, I'm not touching it but 200 in the last week um some of the other ones I've been excited to watch, Hive blew up. I think it was 60% or 70% yesterday. I think it reached a buck 47. I think that was from yesterday, all-time high, if I'm not mistaken. Let's have a peek. Yeah, all-time high yesterday. I don't think that's the end for Hive. I don't know for sure, right? But I guess I would sell my Hive, you know, five, six bucks. I've got a few thousand Hive and um i'm excited man like the idea that these that these alt are popping and then i can reallocate them into into splinterland as assets which is definitely 100 percent my intent i've got kind of some altcoin bags and they're just they're just little they're little farms for money and then i'm gonna when i when i cultivate those farms i'm gonna put it into the splinterlands realm okay Let's get into some rank battle. I'm at 2964, which means I'm in diamond. Diamond three. Going against Mach V. 1 million power, 2800 rank points. Odd monsters only, and everybody's got holy shield. Odd monsters. Holy shield. Gorlodon Lord. Give it a go. The two. The team. The tandem. Yeah, man. There's some exciting stuff here. What coins are you guys into? These ones I've hearted on Live Coin Watch are ones that I used to be into or that I'm I know someone who's into them or I currently have a bag. Um but most of them are just things that I've I used to be into or that I know somebody's into. But I've got some, I mean, XRP, I've got some EOS, I've got some Dash, I've got some Dent, I've got some Hive and Steam and SPS. That's about it. How about you guys? Okay. IRL. No magic, still good. Ooh, the stun is always annoying, but I'm gonna go first. So hopefully he doesn't stun me. Oh, he did stun. <laughs> okay, he didn't stun there. Retaliate, okay. I'm, I'm definitely hooped now. I need two hits for the healed. You can't get through. You can't get through the silver shield paladin without um, at least two attackers. You need three probably because that's shield or magic. It's a great tank. It was one of my first favorite tanks that the silver shield paladin, and it was one of the reasons why white is one of my favorite teams to this day. And I picked it up as an. I had a level six beta, and I think I sold that. And then I bought this level seven alpha. One thing you guys should know about cards when you're building your deck is that there are certain, you know, of course you want to have every card maxed out, but that's not reasonable. One tip for you would be to focus on if you like a specific card and you, you're growing to think, you know, you're deciding 
I really want this card to be leveled up. Okay, well, what level is important to you? There are certain breakpoints that are going to trigger certain abilities. If you're taking that into account as you invest your money, you're going to, you're going to, you can more precisely and more meaningfully grow the power of your deck. For instance, if you were going to play in, if you were going to play in silver, let's, let's go over to rank battle for a second. Let's say you're going to play in silver and come over here. You know that your summoner level limits are five for common, four for rare, three for epic, and two for legendary. That's going to impact which monsters you can play. Not everybody knows that. If you're if you're brand new here, I, I wager you didn't know that. So first of all, every league has summoner level limits. Those level limits are the highest level of summoner you can play at those various rarities. Common level summoner, five. Rare, four. Three epic and two legendary. And then, so the first thing you need to ask yourself is which summoner am I playing with? Am I playing with a Mylor? Go over to Mylor. He's a rare. We gotta go to summoners. Oh, I gotta go to the shop because I don't own a Mylor. So I'm in the market. I click on green, which is the earth element. I click on blue, which is the rare, uh, rare level of summoners. And I'm going to specify summoners. Now, these are all the rare level summoners for the green team. As you can see, one of them is beta, one of them is alpha, and one of them is untamed, and one of them is dice, I think, right? Is that is that the card from dice? I think so. Now, we said that we could do a level four rare. So let's just click on any of these, doesn't matter which. They're all the, they're all rare, so they all apply to the same level at silver. We can, we can deploy a level four summoner at uh, silver. This one here is a level four summoner and it's gonna cost $222. It's a, it's a wizard of Eastwood. Um, this is gonna be, the, it's gonna maximize your playing power at silver, this card. Now, if you did that, you would need to look at the stats. A level four wizard of Eastwood or more broadly, a level four rare summoner is going to uh, enable the following monster levels. If you want to find this, first of all, before I read it out, if you want to find it for yourself and you don't know this yet, you just need to click on marketplace. You need to click on any that your favorite summoner that you want to work with and click on their stats. And then you're going to see at every level that the summoner grows, they, they are able to deploy more and more powerful monsters. This is important because at level four, you're going to only be able to deploy level five common, level four rare, level three epic, and level two legendary. So knowing that, you can then choose which monsters, which levels you want to reach your monsters to. You're not, if you're going to play in silver, you don't want legendary level three. It's useless. You, legendary level two is your most and so on. And then if there are certain monsters that you love, like we were just talking about the... Silver Shield Paladin. See, he's not. He is rare. Beta. Okay, there he is. So look, I can play a level. He's he's rare, so I can play a level four of this monster in silver with a level four um summoner. And so I need to come over to stats, and I can see level four would include eleven copies of this card put together into one. It's going to enable two melee attack, two speed, three armor, and seven hit points. It's important to note that level three only has one melee damage, whereas level four has two melee damage. That's what I mean when I say breakpoints. There are certain level uh, increases that are going to make meaningful changes to the power of your monster. Going from one melee to two melee is gigantically important. It's very, very significant. It's going to mean that you do damage to other monsters that have shield. It's just, it's that it's such a significant, especially at silver, that one more melee damage is so important. That's all I wanted to say about that. You need to understand which monster, which summoners you, you can use in the league you're playing at. What monsters do they enable? And then of the monsters that they enable that you like playing with, which ones um, understand their breakpoints, their ability breakpoints and reach out invest to get certain really important abilities like if you had five copies of this guy and you're using a level three you should try and find those extra six copies buy them get them you know put bids in the market 
so that you can really transform the power of your Silver Shield pal Paladin. Okay, let's get back to the battle. <clears throat> and every monster has different breakpoints like that. And so as you're building your deck, you really need to you need to understand which monsters are really important, but also what levels are really important for those really important monsters. Some monsters come out the gate at level one as being very significant, like Mitika Headhunter for the green team. It's a very powerful archer, costs eight mana, but I think it has four archery damage on the level one. That's really significant archery damage at level one. Some monsters have really low damage and then they grow into this really powerful thing like the Earth Elemental. It's another archery um, unit. It's three mana cost and it starts off as one archery damage and it, and it gets like three or four hit points. But at the highest level, it gets like eight hit points and it has three archery damage So and self heal. So it's a super powerful card, but it's not powerful at lowest levels. So if you know where you're playing and understand those level limits and and also the breakpoints on those abilities, you're gonna you're gonna grow, and and stretch your dollar further with this game, rather than just upgrading everything you've got. Upgrade certain cards to get really key abilities. It's gonna be a shorter video today, guys. I got a bunch of things to do. Triple silence right now. Triple. Why? Why? Because I'm using Lord of Darkness as my main tank, and he's not at all equipped to deal with to deal with uh, magic. Do 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 do. Okay, we'll do this battle and one more battle after this, and then we'll call it. Did you guys, I know some of you guys are BCB fans. I saw somebody throw in the, the tagline, the BCB tagline in my comments the other day. I saw that, I liked that. But uh, this morning he went live and he was talking about how Bitcoin was touching the, just poked past the 702 retracement. That's exciting. I am, I am pumped. Like Christmas, it might come early guys. This is really cool. Wow, that's a lot of archery damage. The War Chang is a card that I wish I had a maxed out copy of. This thing is deadly. With the Retaliate, the Trample, the Archery, and the um, Melee. I love these cards that do two types of melee attacks, two types of attack. They're so versatile. And in certain gameplay, in certain modes, where, for instance, l m where your melee can attack from any position, this War Chang is extra deadly. Or... If archery can attack from the first position, the war chant can be slotted into the first position and be, you know, particularly effective also. Okay. I think I could be in trouble. Because, you know, I played, I was gearing up to nerf his magic and he didn't throw magic at all. So that's a problem for me. But there's still good cards. Um, I'm not, I think I might lose. But if I get some good retaliates, that could be that could be turn the tides. And that that cancel of the heal on the Hydra is pretty important. But he stunned my uh, Lord of Darkness. That's bad news right off the bat. Poison is no good. Yeah, there it is. It's OK. So far, it's not going too bad. At least I killed the Hydra quickly, right? There we go. There we go. Looking OK, looking OK. Yeah, we got this, I think. Right? Yeah, we do. And the trample. Nasty little trample. There it is, though. Hmm. Tough team, though. Good good deck. Alex Zemmer. 61 Dark Energy Crystals per victory right now, and I'm playing around 95% capture rate. This is, like I said, diamond level 3. So that's good. That's good. Um, those are good returns. I feel 
Have you guys found this season that the Dark Energy Crystal returns at every league are more stable? That's what I've found. I have a bronze account. I have a silver account. I have a, I was playing in gold. Now I'm playing in diamond. So I've played at four different levels this season. And I've really found that this, the, the, the victory, the DEC per victory has been more stable than previous seasons. I don't know if that's because of the changes with the bots or if it's because of the changes with how they cap the rewards for players who are, who are, have huge rank points but stay in lower leagues something's going on where it's affected the stability of the dc awarded per win okay melee mayhem melee mayhem hmm okay definitely mother kala always mother kala but even better drake of arnak because then I get armor on my little squishies. So for instance, silver shield. Oh, never mind. Armor up is here. So I'm going to save the rank points. I'm going to go sun gazer. Camilla sun gazer life. And then we're going to get all the squishy little guys that do a decent amount of damage once they are amped up. And how do we amp them up? We throw in the silver shield knight. And also, it's great if we can throw in the Evangelist. I, I might rethink the Evangelist right now. We'll see. It would be great to maybe do like a Silver Shield Assassin instead. But I could also maybe do... See, I'm tempted to get my Paladin out there. Because the shield, right? Yeah, I might, I might regret this, but I want the Paladin out there, and he's going to have the armor for the repair, but now we need one more monster with the Creeping Ooze. Go. We'll see, we'll see. Hmm, I should have put the Ooze in the first position. That was a mistake. And see what he did is better too. He put the assassin in the third position. He put him in the third position because the second is susceptible to blast damage. If I had used utilized blast monsters, he would have been susceptible to dying in the second position. So this is the safest spot for this monster. It's not going to be hit by my primary attack. It's not going to be hit by my blast damage. It's not going to be snuck attack. It's not going to be opportunity attacked. This thing is going to live... This might be the reason he wins. We'll see if he wins, but this if he wins, it'll be this will be a pivotal card. Now it is gonna help me that I have Camilla, because that's gonna nerf all of his attacks, right? The fact that he poisoned me right off the bat is a shame because that's going to kill me for sure in the next three rounds, right? I think I'm going to be okay, though. Just looking at it. Yeah, like him dying right there is pretty huge. Now, it kind of doesn't matter if he kills me. Kills my assassin. Yeah, we got this. If I poison him, yeah, that's that's a wrap. Okay. I can't remember if that was the third game or the second game. Let's look at the time. If we're under 20 minutes, we'll do one more. Just under 20 minutes. We'll do one more. That was 80 DC. Hmm. Okay. Um, 870,000 opponent. Oshurama. Opportunity and common and rare only. Common and rare only. So I definitely want to punch first. Opportunity, you gotta you, you can't you can't be slow when this opportunity mode is in, in play. Because if you do, you're not gonna get your chance to punch. You're gonna die. So I'm gonna say. I'm gonna I'm gonna think about Kitty here. Now, one thing. what I can do for like
Mm. No, I don't like this this build. So we're gonna go Drake of Arnak. We're gonna go red. Ooh, can I do it? I love my magma troll, but I need to go exploding rats. And then we just throw in the chicken. Look, I love this combo. Exploding dwarf, exploding rats. And my exploding rats isn't even maxed out. In fact, it, I'm, it needs to be maxed out. We're going to buy a couple of rats before we, before we end this. I think I didn't max it out because I was still playing in gold when I last looked at it. And I, that's level seven is high enough for gold. Okay, this is, I feel like this is game over for him. I have too much blast damage. I have too much speed. He's, I mean, I can't see how he wins. Let's put it that way. If he had magic, I'd be in trouble because the magic would have just shot my my level one monsters. Are you kidding me right now? The crustacean king with his one speed hit my my dwarf. That is laughable. At least they missed the rat. Cool, we got this. Okay, guys. We're going to leave it at that one. Thanks so much for your time and attention. It's worth something, so it means a world to me that you spend it with me. And um, as always, if you're new to the channel, my name is Dwayne Cunningham. I go by Infidel1258, and we cover Splinterlands all day, every day. So if that sounds good, stick around, like, and subscribe. Leave a comment below. I do my best to read them all. Can't reply to everybody, but I try. And we do regular uh, giveaways for people who leave their like a decent comment and their in-game name. I'll send you some SPS or some DEC. Um, okay, guys, thanks a lot. Have an amazing day. God bless.